Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we got the Musicier X7 back on the bench. Time to dive into this thing. Mostly what we have to do this time is, I want to say it's more mechanical than it is dealing with electrical. Like the electrical stuff's pretty simple. There's positive and grounds and positive and grounds. We're going to remove the wiring from the headphone jack and we're going to wire the output transformer grounds directly to the speaker negative jacks and get that part of this done. And so, again, it's pretty simple electrically, but it's going to be more of a challenge mechanically on getting these parts like unsoldered and unbolted and moved around. And I've already got the ham and choke bolted down. Got fixing to pull out this choke and yeah, let's get busy doing the last little bit of stuff that I want to do to this amp so I can go compare it to the R8. So let's get busy. Okay, so we're coming in today to change out a few parts. And I've already done a little bit of this off camera. I went ahead and bolted in this new Hammond choke. And the only thing I had to do was come in here and slot out this hole here a little bit where this stud comes out of the chassis in the front and the back so that it would slide over them. The original one had slots instead of just holes. And so not a big deal there to get that to fit. I went ahead and replaced this capacitor to kind of get an idea of how difficult this was going to be. And it was actually easier than I thought it was going to be. What I did is I came in and removed the two wires that were connected here. And then I got some of my wicking stuff, and which is looks like this. And removed all the solder and got this joint disconnected. And then I put a screwdriver between this little circuit board and the cap. Made sure this side was loose heated this up and pulled the circuit board off with all the wires still connected so I didn't have to disconnect. Let me see if I can tilt the amp up here and show you what this looks like. I didn't have to disconnect all the ground wires. They were they came off with the board so that made things a whole lot easier. So we're gonna try to do the same thing on this other cap. So first we want to remove this cap That disconnected and get this resistor disconnected and then pull them off of this other side so get that cap out of our way get that resistor out of our way get that resistor disconnected so basically what we want to do to start with is we want to remove all the wires from the positive side and then get some desoldering wick and suck up as much of this as we can and get the positive side of the cap disconnected what we don't want to have to do is disconnect all these ground wires now some of these ground wires we are going to be changing and honestly, it wouldn't be the end of the world to just disconnect a lot of those while we're doing this, too. So I know this wire goes to the output transformer on this channel. So we'll go ahead and get that disconnected because we're going to be wiring that up differently. You know, I know it helps to be zoomed in to do some of this stuff, but then... You can't really get an overall view. So this is the negative wire for the output transformer on this side. And we're going to be connecting it directly to the speaker jack. And there's a couple of things going on here at the same time that we, I think we can do. We're going to be getting rid of the wiring that comes up here to the front end. And actually, let me spin the amp around. And I think I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all this wiring up here that comes up here to this headphone jack. Because this headphone jack stuff is all tied in with the grounds that go to that coupling cap.
So this headphone jack wiring, they actually have it all tied off by itself. So we can just pull it out. Just like this. And there's the headphone jack wiring. So that's done with the front side of the amp. So it comes back here to the back side of the amp. And since I know I'm going to be connecting this wire up to the speaker jack, I'm going to go ahead and solder that one in place while I get this one hot. This other one's too short. We're probably going to have to lengthen it. So let me go ahead and prep this wire. And that way when we get this one all heated up, we can just pull this wire out and stick the other one in. Just like that. And actually what we can do with these wires coming off the positive is just trim them off right there close to the jack and there's no point in heating them up to desolder them did have the headphone wiring grounding itself back to the chassis over here which I'm not really crazy about how that's being wired up but that's part of why we're redoing this and now all that wiring just getting thrown away and this is where our signal ground gets connected to the chassis so now we can come over here and finish desoldering some of this stuff on this cap one of the interesting things about this power supply is these two caps and this rectifier are only fitting the output tubes. The front end tubes all have their own separate power supply. So the next thing we need to do is these two red wires here supply the B plus voltage to the output transformers. Okay. So now, I'm going to get my my soldering wick and start soaking up the solder on this positive terminal. You can see it just sucks up the solder off the joint. There's other ways of doing this. I know they make like little solder vacuum tools and they make little, little Teflon solder sucker things but I've had good luck just using this this copper wick kind of desoldering material and I think that's got this pin disconnected from that board the next thing I want to do is desolder the negative leads that we're not going to be using. This one here can go. I believe there's one other so that's this wire here that goes over to the output transformer and as you can see, it's not quite long enough to reach up here to this terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and unsolder it over here. Honestly, there's not many more negative wires on here. It might make sense just to go ahead and unsolder all of these. And then I can deal with this little circuit board by itself. Just like that. 
So then I'm going to take this and use my soldering wick and mop up all of this solder and then switch this board over to the new cap. Okay, so here's our new 500 volt cap versus the 450 one that we took out. And we'll swap this little piece of tape across to the new one. Little insulator thingy. And you just kind of look at where it's going to sit in here. Wrap that around it. And that just gives it a little protection in that clamp. So the first thing I want to do is tack these two leads onto this little circuit board, which I really like what they've done here with this little circuit board. That gives you a nice solder pad to solder all these wires together. On the R8, they just kind of soldered all the wires onto those little studs sticking out which obviously isn't a nice way of doing it so just there's lots of little things like this on this amp that I'm seeing that just kind of makes it a step above an R8 as far as the manufacturing of it so the next thing I want to do is I need to solder the wire from the rectifier and the wire going to the choke over here onto this terminal I'm going to go ahead and solder that onto there. And then we've got this one wire here that's going over to our choke that also needs to go onto the positive side of this cap. So basically, the way the wiring in this goes, the DC positive comes off of this rectifier bridge, comes over here to the positive side of this cap, then it comes over here to this choke, then the other wire for the choke comes over here to the positive of this cap, and then you have a ground here that jumpers between these two caps, then you have the ground here, this wire here, goes to the chassis ground, and then, I know this wire is black, but that's really the positive wire coming from the choke. The original one was red, but that one's not. And then you have this other little ground wire here that needs to be connected. And since we eliminated this headphone wiring, we eliminated several ground wires that were over here. Now another thing we need to go ahead and do is hook up this output transformer to this speaker jack and then when we're all done we're going to hook a small wire from each one of these speaker jacks over to our ground point. Let's go ahead and get this output transformer wired back up. And that's the, the main reason that we were removing all that headphone jack wiring is so that the output transformer ground can connect directly to the speaker ground instead of running in wires all around the amp and through little tiny points up in the headphone jack and then back to the chassis ground. We're going to have the grounds for the output transformers connected directly to the speaker jacks. Actually, before I do that, go ahead and solder a couple of small, smaller wires to run over to our ground point from these speaker jacks while we're over here soldering to the ground point. The reason that you ground the output transformer negatives to the chassis is so that in case the output transformer ever shorts out that it will blow the fuse rather than making the chassis hot where you could potentially have hundreds of volts of DC on the outside of the chassis. 
so it's a safety thing that you ground the output transformers to the chassis now I've seen some people in some mod videos people talking about that they lifted the ground of the output transformers from the chassis and that's a bad idea okay and then let's go ahead and put another ground wire here the other thing I've seen people do is daisy chain these two speaker jacks together and I don't think that's a good idea either I like running separate ground wires from each channel to the ground point so we're going to heat this one back up and ideally earlier when we heated this one up we should have added this extra ground wire while we already had this all heated up but and so these two wires are going to get pulled over to this ground point over here on this cap and again way they wired this really is like star grounding unlike what the R8 was wired like and why we had to rewire so much of that amplifier and honestly I think it's gonna be easier to deal with to go ahead and bolt this thing down rather than trying to mess with it floating around in here and you don't want to tighten this up super tight where you crush this capacitor you just want to get it good and snug so we have this jumper ground this main ground actually I may try to do these at more one at a time and then we can come back and flow some solder over the whole thing when we're done those two and there was one more there it is actually I may pull that through and solder it on the other side It's not going to hurt anything to flow a little extra solder into that whole joint just so all that stuff's held together really good. Then the last thing we need to do is we need to pull these two ground wires over here from the speakers and hook them up to that same ground point. There we go. We all of our we have all our grounds connected. So the last thing we've got to do, we've got these two hot wires that go up to the output transformers to power them up, which powers up the tubes. And then we have the one wire from the choke that we need to pull up here too. We'll have a little video mishap here. I thought I was recording and I wasn't, but I'm not gonna unsolder this just to show you soldering this back together. We basically solder, there's two red wires that go up here to the output transformer, to this pin and this pin on the output transformer, but there's two red wires here. There's also the other wire from the new choke comes over here and solder those three big wires on. Then solder this one little resistor right here that goes down to the board underneath. And then we have this bleeder resistor that goes across this cap then we have another film cap that goes across the cap as well. And one of the tricks that I showed was really put a big blob of solder on there holding those three wires to the cap. And then when you come back to solder these smaller components in, be careful that you don't like melt that whole big blob of solder and have all that fall off while you're working on it. As soon as you see like the top layer of the solder melting where this resistor is connected, just take the heat off. And the same thing with these resistor and capacitor combo. Just 
have a nice blob of solder on the end of your soldering iron and then as you heat up and you see this flowing into the solder that's there and like the top couple of layers of the blob of solder on there melting get the heat out because you don't want to heat this up so much that like all that falls off and you got to start over so anyway that's got our upgrades done we've replaced these two 450 volt caps with 500 volt ones Got a 250 milliamp choke installed. We've wired the output transformers directly to the negative speaker terminal, eliminating all that headphone wiring. And then we've also grounded the speaker negatives to our star ground point right here. And that's really all the upgrades this thing needs. They really did a nice job laying out the wiring and the grounding and it's a really well thought out amp unlike the R8 that had all kinds of weird grounding issues. So the last thing I need to do is come in and replace these 5 watt 10 ohm resistors from the cathode to the ground with some 1 watt ones. And the reason for that is you want this to be the weak point in the amp where if the tube shorts out or red plates or something bad happens it'll pop this resistor at like a fuse instead of taking out the output transformers or some other expensive parts of the amp so we're going to come back solder these resistors in the last thing we may have to look at and i may just go ahead and do it is replacing this little film cap across the power switch people have reported and the owner did too that the amp makes a pop noise when you turn the power off and about the only thing it can be is this capacitor is not doing its job so we're going to solder one of those in too. Well we got these little upgrades done to this amp and honestly I would have even considered these to be like mandatory upgrades. One of the reasons I was doing these little upgrades was the amp was here. The guy paid $125 to have it shipped here. It's probably going to be $125 to send it back to him so you know, he said, while you've got it, if you see anything you want to do and it's not a whole lot of money, let's just do it. And so, placing this choke, I'll be able to bias the tubes a little hotter. I want to play around with, especially in triode mode, seeing if I can get a cleaner sound out of it and get a little more power by biasing these hotter and just play around with that and see what it does. I don't know how much difference it's going to make in ultralinear mode, but... You know, it's worth trying and see if it does some good things to the frequency response or the distortion and, you know, play with that kind of stuff. The little bit I have played with this amp, I did put a 7025 electroharmonics driver tube in it in place of the 12AX7, and I really like what that did. Reduced the gain just a touch, you know, probably not enough you'd really even notice, but it also seemed to just kind of warm up the sound, and it's definitely a quieter cleaner sounding tube than a 12AX7 is going to be in this use. Also put some KT88-Z tubes in it. I don't know if you remember the earlier video, but the tubes that came with the Music Share ones, they weren't a match set. There was a pair that was matched, but the other two were like way off and it was just, it wasn't ideal. And with a push-pull amp, to me, you need at least matched pairs, if not the whole quad. So, you know, if you have two tubes that aren't matched on the same channel, it's just not ideal in a push-pull amp. So, he mailed me these, got a good deal on them, I'm sure. The Gold Lion tubes are really sweet if you can find a decent deal on them. But right now, to me, the prices just are ridiculous. They're $600 for a quad, and it's not worth paying that over what these sound like. These aren't going to be around long. And so, if you want to try some of these KT88-Zs, I'll put the link below. I've got no affiliation with these folks. I've just had good luck with their shop in China. Get a set of these before they're gone. These outer tubes, these 12 AU7s, probably aren't going to contribute a whole lot to the sound, given that they're the phase splitters. But, might be worth playing with. I think I've got some new production electroharmonics ones I could try. Going to deal with that when we do our listening session. So I've got the work that I wanted to get done. I fixed the problems that it came in for, which was mainly these rotary switches. We put these nicer bias pots in. Now we've got good 
power capacitors and we got a choke that can handle the tubes that are in this amp so we're going to go this weekend and go do a back-to-back -back with the r8 that a friend of mine has with the same output tubes in it and see what they sound like compared to each other don't know i mean it's the r8 is a good sounding amp and if this sounds similar i feel like this is a better built amp it's got better parts inside it it really can be used just out of the box where the r8 has got some issues like the safety resistors on the bias boards that really needs to be addressed before the amps used so hope you're enjoying this content on this music share amp if you are enjoying this content please subscribe to the channel please like the video I want to thank all my patreon folks plus you guys that donate to my website that help make all of this possible so i'll see y'all next week when we come back to do a review on this and have a nice day Thank you.